What is up? Welcome back to Barbecue at Stadium. I'm your host, Craig, and this week is huge. Venison ribs. First time ever cooking them. First time ever attempting this. It's really uh, an experimental stadium this week on Barbecue It. So where did I get this venison? Well, I'm actually not a hunter, although I've filmed hunting. <laughs> I didn't shoot this deer. I didn't harvest this deer, if you will. My buddy, Anthony Catarano, chef extraordinaire and restaurateur here in the Northeast. He's also a very avid outdoorsman. And we recently went over to his house to pick up our venison. Anthony Catarano, look at him. This is probably a three-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old deer. Beautiful, and you caught it locally, or harvested it locally here in Massachusetts. Yeah, right, right in Wenham. Oh, look in here, folks. The ribs. <laughs> My favorite part, right? I think, I think we're gonna try some ribs, Anthony. We got a shot at it? I think so. All right, so the process of getting these ribs to where they are today was pretty simple. Once we got them from Anthony, I brought them back, cleaned them up, silver skin, all that jazz, cut the racks in half because they're almost oval shaped so I could fit them into a marinade bag. And the description below has the full recipe in the marinade, which of course is a lot of the typical things. Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, ginger, bay leaves, pineapple juice, which is our tenderizer. So 24 hours in the bag, then we're gonna pull these out of the bag dry them off and get ready to apply our rub. All right, so let's get our fire started first because we need to get it up to temperature. We're doing the typical snake method, two rows and then a single on top, and then a chimney, a little baby chimney with about 12 of these Weber briquettes. I really like these Weber briquettes because they absolutely burn great. Okay, so for our wood today, pecan, pecan, I don't care how you say it, it tastes the same. I love it. It'll get most of its smoke in the first couple hours and we really don't know how long this cook's gonna take, but we're ready for it. All right, so let's get this up to temp. 250, 220, somewhere around there. Now over here, what are we cooking on? This is exciting. This is a new product that some people might have seen. It's made by Aura Outdoor Products. They make a lot of great barbecue and grilling accessories. And this is one of them as well. This is really cool. So this turns your Weber into a Kamado. So it has this really cool little attachment right here that fits over the tab that normally your traditional Weber grill sits on. See how that little thing will lock in right there? You'll see that on the close-up, I'm sure. And then boom, that way it doesn't move. Very cool. Then you have your dividers, which you can choose to put any fashion you want. Two, one, indirect. You see how this thing will work, really cool. Today we're going full indirect cook. So it's just as though we just turned our Weber into a Kamado. And your grill grates go on. And now we have a ton of real estate to put our four racks of ribs on our Weber. Very exciting, cool product. And now on to the good stuff, the venison. Oh, and what do I have here? <laughs> oh my goodness. Just take a, take a gander at those. <laughs> Is that not absolutely beautiful? As you can see, there's a little bit of scrapness on these that you wouldn't see on, on other cuts of meat, but so that marinade really, I think, did a great job. I love the color. I think this is gonna be really good. I'm gonna dry these off just a little bit before we put our rub on. Okay, so those look good and dry. Now our rub, this is not a typical barbecue rib recipe, obviously from the marinade I did and now this rub. It consists of dried porcini mushrooms, which I zapped in the spice blender, coffee, salt, pepper and sumac, which is a Middle Eastern spice. It's really good and it's got a really neat umami flavor on its own. And that's what we're going for on these ribs today. It's just gonna be fantastic. All right, so let's apply this. Looks like our grill's getting close to 200. So we're gonna get our rub on here. There we go, right about 230. I'll take that because the smoke is rolling and the smoke waits for nobody. Let's get these dogs on. <laughs> this is pretty, this is pretty wild, man. This is, this is very cool, very exciting. New product, new technique, new everything. All right, so there we go. Just gonna let it ride. It's a smoking game now, so we'll check these in a couple hours and see how they look. So we're about two hours in and every 30 minutes or so, I've been spritzing. Let's have a quick peek. Oh. <laughs> Look at those. Mm, tender. Feeling tenderness. 
So what I'm hitting these with is a little apple juice about every 30 minutes or so. I might even be gone 40 minutes just to keep a little moisture on them. Of course, it's gonna add a little bit of flavor. It's looking really good, so we're gonna keep the spritz up and at right around hour three, maybe a little bit before then, we're gonna go ahead and put a wrap on this. It is time to wrap and boy, does it smell good. Woo! <laughs> Oh, uh, this is Christmas morning. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap these individually because they're such awkward shapes. I'm gonna put them basically meat side down. <laughs> All right, this is not gonna be the typical wrap. I'm glad you're enjoying the journey with me on this experiment. We're gonna basically a little bit of apple juice because they need to have something to help them steam. I think that's probably enough. No more additional spice or anything like that. All right, so basically, I'm gonna go through this process, wrap all three of these, and put them right back on the grill. Man, these smell fantastic. So there you go, all three, all four wrapped. A Little bit of apple juice in there. It's actually still a little bit of smoke in here. I can't, I think my snake is not even halfway around. Amazing. This thing has been holding 250 perfectly for three hours. All right, well, there you go. I'm gonna leave this on for at least another hour. Let them seep. I got a feeling that it might take a little more than four hours, but who knows? Venison ribs, it's an experiment. Still sitting at 250, hour number five. Ready for the reveal. Boom. Now, what I did was at hour four, I wrapped these, put, I combined them, checked on them, checked the temperature, and I combined them, stacked them. And uh, I was very happy with what I saw at hour four, but at hour five, oh, oh. Oh, the smell, there is just nothing like this. Look at that. That is stunning. Look, my glasses are fogging up because it's 35 degrees out here. Ooh. I've never smelled anything like this in my life. This is just unbelievable. Look at that. Stunningness. All right. Let's, uh, let's pop a little juice. A little juice game. Wow. All right, and let's slice into one of these. Man, these, this is just, this is very exciting. This is very exciting. <laughs> My goodness, okay. <laughs> look, <laughs> look at that. Oh, stunning. I don't know, hopefully you can get tight enough on that to, wow. Okay, here we go, the KCBS bite challenge. Hopefully it stays on the bone. There it is. Mm. Wow. I've never tasted anything quite like this. Very heavy on the umami. It's just stunning. It's just really, really good. So thank you so much to Anthony Catarano for harvesting this animal. Thank you to Backlash for providing my beverages, even though I don't have one right now. Thank you to the Aura Company, Aura Outdoor Products, for this amazing ProZone system they have coming out for the Weber 22. Knockout. I mean, it stayed at the exact temperature for five hours. Boom, 250. So awesome. Oh, go out and get you some venison, man. Oh, yeah. Click it, share it, subscribe. Do all that jazz. Ask some questions. Suggest some things to cook. It's going to be a long winter. Let's get going. Oh, my goodness. So good. Thanks for watching Barbecue.